Disney exec blames the Marvel's flop on bigoted audience members. Oh boy, here we go. Let me talk to you guys like you're my friends. What is wrong with these people? Like what is actually wrong with them? <laughs> How are they arriving at, like when I see articles like this, like, usually I look in the news or to see if there's any upcoming movies or news on movies, and then I see things like this, and I'm like, what, what? What, uh, what are we, in junior high school? Like, what the hell, is, what is this? Because when a movie tanks or nobody's interested in seeing your movie, it is completely the audience member's fault not your fault. What, where do we arrive at this entitled society where people are selling a product and people don't want it and you blame the consumers for not buying it? That feels a little bit more bigoted in my opinion. Like there's just zero tolerance because you don't want to do what I tell you or buy what I'm feeding you. It almost comes off kind of grapey if you know what I mean. Like, ooh, I like, I like you, I want you to like me, I want you to buy what I'm selling. No thank you, I'm good, I'm not interested. Really? Really? Okay then, you slut. You know what I mean? Like, this is what it's giving. And it's so annoying and I feel like more people need to call this stuff out because these people obviously have gotten too much freedom. I mean, freedom is not the word. They've gotten away with too much thinking that their shit doesn't stink or something. Now this is only based on what the article is saying and there's enough of them coming out saying that this is not a good look for this person. It says a Disney executive reportedly blamed sexist audience members for the recent box office failures of films like The Marvels. The lowest earning MCU movie of all time is The Marvels, earning just 206 million worldwide. Its poor performance wasn't on Disney's 2023 bingo card heading into a promising theatrical year. Yeah, most of Disney's movies have been doing badly because people have forgotten the art of actually catering to their audiences of refining their work and making stuff that people want to listen to, watch, take part in, celebrate, support. You cannot shove something down someone's throat if they don't like the taste of it. That's the four letter word, you know what I mean? And then gaslighting them for it is just very toxic behavior. So it's very ironic, these people calling audience members toxic. Also, when you consider that the broad scope of audiences that go to movies, they're not people online talking about stuff like this. Like I'm a YouTuber, I'm talking about it because it's annoying. <laughs> I want to see movies do well. I'm noticing this stuff and I wanna talk about it. We talk about it with each other on Twitter. I talk about it with people in real life. Most people that I talk to, like my family members or people I'll meet on the street, they don't know what's going on with this. I asked them, did you see this movie? No, why? I don't know, it just didn't seem interesting. They don't care. It has nothing to do with the actors or YouTube videos saying whatever they're saying. They just literally felt like it wasn't interesting. And as I've said before in other videos, people are hurting financial wise. So they're gonna be a lot more choosy on what they go out to see. They also don't have a lot of time because people are working more because they have less money. So they're trying to make more of it. So they're going to be more picky on what they choose to go to, to see the movies. And if the past few movies have been very lackluster while the ticket prices remain the same and you cannot refund those tickets, people are going to be a little bit shy when it comes to going to the movies. But then to blanket statement claim that everybody who didn't watch the movie or didn't like it is bigoted seems like the person making that statement has some severe mental issues and is very entitled. I don't even want to say they have mental issues because then it's like taking away the accountability from them. They probably know full well what they're doing. Like, ooh, the last hundred times you blamed people for a movie's failure by calling them bigoted, it surely it really rang in their ears and made them go see the others. Like that doesn't work, obviously. So in this part of the article, it claims that this Disney executive called out bigoted fans. <laughs> so it said Matt Baloney, an entertainment reporter for Puck, recently published a newsletter with a statement from an unnamed Disney executive. Now take this with a grain of salt. This all could be wrong. We weren't there, but going off of, let's supposing that this is actually something that happened, I'll be responding to that based on my opinion. So it claimed that Baloney explained that this message from the Disney exec responded to a recent article he published which covered whether the politicization of the Disney brand impacts the box office. And this was met by a very harsh response from the executive. It said he basically targeted politicized audience members who equate the perceived message in a film as a quality issue. Now I'm guessing they're going off of like they're paraphrasing or they're quoting what he said here. And he states, Everyone says it's the movies, stupid, which is an easy thing for people to say. More appealing movies are a great way to jump the political issues. 
but more and more our audience or the segment of the audience that has been politicized equate the perceived messaging in a film as a quality issue. Okay, two things here. First of all, I'm not saying that a lot of the audience members haven't become politicized, but do you think that there's a correlation between the audiences becoming that and your movies becoming more of that? Like, you're saying that the audiences are now politicized, but your movies have also become more politicized. And I'm not talking about movies where the inherent storyline has politics in it. Obviously, most storylines are going to have some elements of politics in it. You know what I mean? The IRL civil dissent that's going on with people choosing one side or the other and the movie being specifically about attacking the other side of people. It's no longer just about the art form. It's about a gash towards the real life audience, but only one section of the audience. An example of this is men or specifically white dudes as Brie Cheese. What's her name? Brie, che Brie Cheese? What, what am I saying about Cheese? No, that's not her name. What the frick is her name? Ca the Captain Marvel woman. Oh my God, are you serious? What's her name, dude? Carol Danvers. That's the character. Oh my God, that's so embarrassing. Brie, Brie Larson. There you go. There you go. Brie Larson. <laughs> As she said, she's pandering towards women of color and whatever. That's not really a bad thing. But then why did you have to be like, I don't want to know if 40 old white dudes. <laughs> Like that is not necessary. <laughs> like, as I said before, people can come out and claim that, oh, she's being innocent when she says it. But yet, if you turn the tables and say the exact same thing by placing and substituting like woman or a black person or Asian person in there, it sounds bad. If it sounds bad when you flip it around, then maybe it shouldn't be said at all. I mean, that was just courtesy, social etiquette 101 that we learned when we were little, you know? Or maybe people in this country didn't learn that, I don't know. But as I've said, a lot of people, the actors, the establishments have made it about politics and made it about identity politics and all of that. It's no longer about the story. Like people are trying to get people to come see movies by claiming, oh, this is the first uh, pick an ethnicity from out of the box. Lead. Like, that's why people are going to see the movie. We're not interested in that. We don't give a fuck what they look like. Just give us a story. And if the character looked like I am Legend, nobody cared that Neville looked the way he did. He was just Will Smith. I love Will Smith. So maybe I'm biased. But not once watching that did I was I like, who is a black man and a black lead? Like, that. that is not what this is about. This story is, it's a man and his dog. I saw Will Smith as a man first foremost in just by itself. And the only reason why people are going to come up and be like, well, let me think about it is because everyone is putting this magnifying glass on ethnicity and gender and sex. And it's like, why is that necessary? Why can't you just tell a story unless the story has to do with that? But most of the time it doesn't. And you're using this to market to people. So surprise, surprise, when normal people who are not online, who the majority of people who spend money to buy these tickets that you want them to buy, they see you marketing this movie. They, they, they see these clips of people talking about oh, women and you know men or this and, and it's like it, it's confusing because then it's like what is this movie actually about like you're showing me clips of people bantering but except women are just being really nasty first of all you're showing women in a very negative light by making all the main lead characters in modern movies so unlikable you've forgotten how to write strong female characters so people see that and it's a turnoff it's a turnoff to me as as a woman myself like i don't like first of all don't represent me that way <laughs> I don't, that's not a good look. It's almost misogynistic. I don't know, may, maybe it's just me. I know I'm throwing that word out there, but it feels as though the people are writing female characters like that are mocking us or something by saying, this is what strong female characters look like. They're bitches and they're so annoying and unlikable. Let's tank the movie on purpose so that people will not want to invest in strong female characters. I'm not trying to be conspiratorial. I'm being a little bit sort of kind of sarcastic, but that's kind of what it feels like. So when people see that, of course, they're gonna not want to see the movie because you're not really showing them the spirit of what the movie is. That's why most people don't go to see the movie in the first place. And they're just so sick and tired of it. So when they see the marketing around a movie and it's the same thing as the other six movies and those movies were horrible when they spent money to go see them, surprising, I know, they're not gonna wanna spend money to see the others because they're gonna feel like it's exactly the same. The second thing is, how do you know that the majority of the audience are politicized first of all, and are equating the perceived messaging in a film as a quality issue. How do you know that? Granted, there are a lot of people online that are mentioning that and using those talking points, but the majority of people who watch movies or pay for them are not going online with their little fingers 
and typing. I know this sounds crazy, but there's a lot of people in the world that exist out there that are not on Twitter and on their computers 24 seven. You know, their family members, their their husbands, wives, their, what, what sports do people do in a soccer? Like people do things outside of the computer. I'm an introvert, so I'm on the computer all the time. Like my job, I'm on YouTube, I write, I do other gigs and stuff like that. So I'm on, I'm on the computer all the time. Like that everything that I do work related has to do with the computer or YouTube or something, another platforms. It's normal for me. But for other people, uh, they have lives outside of that. So it's a little bit elementary and uh, ignorant to basically say that the entire swath of the audience are politicized and equate the perceived messaging in a film as a quality issue. And just to add one more thing, it is possible that the messaging of a film can be a quality issue. A film's quality can be impacted by the messaging or the execution of the message. It doesn't mean that if you're trying to make a film about a certain message that it's inherently bad because you're trying to push a message. It's the way it's done. For example, I know there are a lot of people out there who are not necessarily against environmentalism, but they are annoyed with people trying to make the environment better. I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe it's because some people that try to push it come off very cringy. I also love the environment. I think that there's realism. There's a way to keep our environment clean and keep it for the generations to come in good working condition. But also you want to be realistic in how you make that happen. Like everyone's stopping and eating meat. That's not realistic. That's obviously. But you'll have films like Avatar with the Navi people that I think had a very cool environmental message. And I didn't come away from the movie thinking, man, they were really pushing that environmental messaging very hard. I didn't even think about that. It was very subtle to me. I mean, it wasn't subtle, but it was it was packaged so well because of how beautiful the film was and the experience of it. Same thing with this movie I watched when I was little called Fern Gully and uh, Bambi and it was beautiful and you came away understanding the message, but not being like shoved up the ass with it. You know what I mean? So it's a way to reach the audience based on the packaging and the execution of the message. And people might have an issue with the quality of the movie if the messaging is not packaged well. You can push a message if you want, because it's art. Everyone has a story to tell. Everyone has bias. They have a perceived scope of the world or their experiences. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you're coming out of the door with the audience members at your feet waiting to hear your story and the first thing you do is throw acid in their faces and tell them to be quiet and take it and when they don't like the execution or the way it's delivered and they walk away you throw glass at the back of their heads like that what do you think is going to happen now they're going to equate you to being an entitled asshole and not going to want to see anything that you put out you're going to associate yourself with being an idiot <laughs> and so people don't like that psychology 101 if you want people to listen to you don't preach at them that doesn't work long term and unless you know under very rare circumstances and even if you're able to achieve that it's not a long-standing thing touch people's hearts that's how you get them to listen not stabbing them in it <laughs> that's crazy i i don't understand i i feel like a lot of these executives they're older people so they should know all of this so i don't know where all of this is coming from if someone is holding fish ass to their heads and threatening to spray some kind of weird juice on them that will infect them for life if they don't say these exact words almost feels like they're being coached to say these things but they're grown ass people so i don't know does someone have your families <laughs> what is going on so the article had gone to saying the message also highlighted other female-led films like the marvels and star wars starring daisy ridley while noting that they believe audience members won't say, won't say they find female empowerment distasteful. However, they will say they don't like the movies because they are bad. <laughs> then it goes and I guess he's saying this. They won't say they find female empowerment distasteful in the Marvels or Star Wars, the latest trilogy starring Daisy Ridley, but they will say they don't like the movies because they're bad. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God, okay. <laughs> the anonymous, no wonder he's anonymous. Is he even real? <laughs> The anonymous exec ended the message by stating that the audience asking for Disney to make movies better actually means make movies that conform to regressive gender stereotypes or put, oh my God, this is so hard to read this. Oh my God, really? <laughs> Hold on, mm, this is actually painful to read. This cannot be real. Hold on. <sighs> okay. He said, <laughs> So make mo better movies becomes code for make movies that conform to regressive gender stereotypes or put men front and center in the narrative, which is what you're seeing right now on what Bob Iger's pivot is about right now. 
Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> wow! What in the flippity floppity idiocy is this person? This isn't a real person. But then again, Twitter exists, so it probably is. Are you kidding me? I don't even know what to say. I, I am so flabbergasted right now reading that layer of shit coated candy corn. It makes no sense. So you just decided, let me calm down. <sighs> Hold on. <clears throat> you just decided that the audiences are saying, the majority of them, hey, the Disney movies are not as good as they used to be. Can you make them better like they used to be? And you took from that to mean, kind of projecting a little bit hard there, are we not Mr. Anonymous exec? That people want the movies to conform to regressive gender stereotypes or put men front and center in the narrative. Isn't that crazy? All those old Disney movies with all those Disney princesses who became iconic and titular characters. Oh my God, we want to go back to those, those female characters that were strong like Belle and Ariel and all of them who went after what they wanted and liberated themselves and were the front and center role for those movies. Let's go back, what, what the, what is he talking about? Okay, so well, I can, I, let me, let me try to speak. I can't speak right now. As a woman, I hate when people start off like that, but I get why people have to do that because we have to let them know that, yeah, this is coming from a perspective of the very person you claim that you're trying to represent or cater to. I don't give a fuck. Give me a good character. If a character is good, regardless of whether or not they're female or male or what color they are, people won't care. They won't care. Nobody care. Do we have to keep bringing up old movies like Terminator and Alien? Those are the biggest ones, but they're not the only ones. Nala from, from The Lion King, Ariel, Belle, Moana, almost every single one of those old style Disney stuff. If it's a dude or a woman, they always have strong female characters. Granted, very, very old movies showed women being completely useless. We don't want to go back to that, obviously. But dude, are you old? okay? Do you need to get laid? Are you okay? No, seriously. Blink twice if you need help because this sounds like a freaking cry for help. I cannot believe that people are this brain dead than to make an ignorant statement like this. There's there's one thing to have an opinion and there's another thing to just have a blanket statement speaking for absolutely everybody on an individualistic level that you don't know. This is the reason why people are having an issue. And then people like this idiot that are coming out anonymously, which was probably a better choice for him or her or whatever. You know, this is the reason why people don't watch movies. This is what turns them off. And I'm going to say this also. I'm not saying every single movie should do this, but I, it's it's. Just stay with me here. This is wild, right? You can also, since we don't really have a lot of that, make movies where men are front and center in the narrative too. Ooh, you can make a good movie too where a woman is in a regressive gender stereotype. Mm-hmm. Mm, mm. Do you know what a good movie for that was? Brave. That was a great movie. Moana, Ariel, Ariel, the little mermaid, she was supposed to follow her father and do what he said and technically play her role. She didn't do that, did she? Same thing with Mulan. Are we forgetting that these movies existed for real? You see how you were still able to make good movies despite those things? Isn't that strange? Oh my God. This person needs to freaking deep throat his own freaking fist. I swear to God. Oh, and then, this part of the article says, sure, there are likely those out there who scoff at the idea of a female-led superhero team up like in the Marvels. However, treating this like a politicized issue or simply believing those audience members are bigots is an unfair generalization. Thank you, at least. Thank you, person who wrote the article. Wow, I'm surprised. I don't even know who the direct is, but and, and look, this is, sorry, I, I'm, I need a stress ball or something. <laughs> It's like, it's insane. <laughs> they, they, they see they see things, the audience is screaming out to them, hey, this is not what we're talking about. They're acting like they're a brick wall. They can't hear what they're saying. Anyway, um, the reason why, what the hell, it's freaking B. Anyway, sorry. The reason why people like me who are female are, uh, they have some severe consternation about female led superhero team ups as they call it, or whenever they see a specific company put out works like that is because recently they have decided the only redeeming quality that makes a character is 
based on what they have in between their legs. They make all the female characters heroes, and there's nothing wrong with that, but they make them the most unlikable people on the face of the earth. It is hard to root for them. I can watch anime, and anime has a bunch of female characters, female leads, whatever, and they show them being weak, they show them being strong, they show them being likable, they show them having issues. Like, for example, one of the uh, recent ones I watched in anime was, uh, was it Hell's Paradise? I forgot the name of it. The Avatar Airborne Bender, that's another one. I know it's not technically an anime. It's a US animation, but still. Yeah, I think it, Gabby Motor. Yeah, the, uh, the Hell's Paradise. I was right. And they made the uh, Swords Girl. I forgot her name, but she comes from a line of families who are like, oh, you're a woman. Just put away the sword. And she has to prove herself. It shows her being scared. It shows her being strong. And I actually love her character because it's so nuanced. A very big part of that story in that anime is that she's a woman and she has to overcome her family or her tribe's view of her stereotypical position that she should fill as a woman. And she's like, no, this is my calling. I want to do this. I got to work harder than everybody else to prove that I can do this. And you know what? She doesn't come off blasting like she's really good. But there are situations where she's, she fails and they're like, see? <laughs> But then she comes back and it's like, you're rooting for her. You're like, man, no, you can do it, girl, get this. And it's about her with that. That's a, that's a gender stereotypical role, but her character has layers. Like the character feels like a real person. When you have characters like Captain Marvel, which isn't the worst movie, mind you, but she is so unlikable. It's like Brie Larson's playing herself in the character. And I'm thinking, okay, well maybe, you know, I, I can separate the artist from the art, but the art is exactly the same. And it's actually worse because now you have this character that has no failure, no weakness. They're just boss ass bitch forever and ever and amen. And even when you make characters like that, you need to at least give them some humility. As I've said, there's a balance. If you're gonna have a very strong character that's OP, make them likable. Like One Punch Man, Saitama, he is unbeatable and he's hella humble and likable. Superman, hella strong. He he has a weakness though, that's one, but he's also very humble. Don't believe me, in this demonstration, we're going to use DC Superman against Marvel's Captain Marvel. Both of them possess Superman-esque powers, but look at the difference between the portrayal of one and how he treats people up front versus a very obvious threat, and the person who lacks humility, who enforces way more power than is needed for something that is nowhere near a perceived threat, especially to someone like her. And tell me which character seems more likable and relatable, despite both of them having very similar powers and strength. Oh, come on, Christian. Knock it off. No. Let me go. Hey, leave it alone, man. Or what, tough guy? Or gonna have to ask you to leave. I think I probably just leave when I'm good and ready. Ooh. It's not worth it, sweetie. Hey, asshole, don't forget your tip. <laughs> Steve Rack. Nice scuba suit. You need a ride, darling? How about a smile for me, huh? A smile? Yeah. I'm off to help you. The least you could do is give me a smile. How about a handshake? <laughs> I'm Veers. People call me the Don. Wow. <laughs> Here's a proposition for you. You're gonna give me your jacket, your helmet, and your motorcycle, and in return, I'm gonna let you. Keep your hand. What, no smile? Just trying to act like a fucking idiot to make no, yourself not, sound I'm better. Not. Or you have somebody who is an asshole that has to bill his way to the top and be humbled and then become powerful. But you cannot have a character start off OP and be OP throughout and then also not be humble and be a fucking asshole. No one's gonna like that character. They're gonna be like, why am I watching this piece of shit? That's why a lot of people didn't like the amazing Spider-Man. I love Andrew Garfield. I love that rendition of Spider-Man, but I understand where people were coming from because he started off not like Peter Parker. He was not humble. He was not humble. He was like, ooh, I, I I got that face. I got that swag, you know? So there's nothing for him to come up on. People are like, I can't relate to that because you already started out being like fully yourself and confident and now you just have powers. Now you're just a little jerk who now has powers. <laughs> and the only thing that did humble him in the end is that he wasn't able to save the love of his life. So he learned a lot from that and he did learn, he did have some losses throughout. Like he was very confident and then things happened to him and he couldn't deal. But with 
Brie Larson or female characters like that, not only are they infallible, and but they talk down to everybody, specifically male counterparts. And that for me was very annoying because I love dudes. I specifically like boy characters as well because every girl we can relate like just like guys will go after anime girls because they find them attractive or they like certain female characters because they have a crush on them and like man this is a sexy girl she's beating up people yes I got respect for that and girls on the flip side will look at men who are strong and attractive and be like damn that's hot I'll, I like to watch that what I don't like watching is what companies think is a good representation of what my sex would be bashing men or to make make myself look good, I'm constantly stepping on their neck. It's not right when you do it either way. And you notice we have come from a time where we haven't really been doing that, like men haven't been doing that to women. And if they do, like the dude from Avatar or Last Airbender, when he was doing it to his sister and be like, oh, you're just a girl, you're this, you're that and he's proven wrong. Like for the longest while, they've been proven wrong. Men have been humbled with that and girls had to work their way to wherever. It's now they're tr trying to act like that didn't exist. That's really disingenuous. <sighs> I know this is like a throwaway video. I'm sorry. I was just, really, I wish that people would stop doing this. I really hope that Bob Iger or whoever is in charge now will turn things around, but we don't want you to focus on men being infallible either. That's not what we're looking for. And you can't just say everybody is bigoted for stating their opinion. Yeah, I agree. There's bigoted people out there. There are people I've spoken to where I like movies and the movies are well liked and done well, but you'll have a female character and these people will be like, ugh, the lead is a female, woke. I'm like, what? <laughs> Bro, calm down. Like, not everything that is a female in it or a person of a different ethnicity other than Caucasian is gonna automatically be woke. Like, they'll watch a movie like I Am Legend and be like, oh, it's woke. Like, shut the fuck up. Really. There's different extremes, but I can tell you from experience, from observation, many people can tell you those extremes are just that, the extremes. They're not 90% of the audience. So then to call 90% of the audience bigoted and then think that that's going to somehow change the outcome of people coming to see your movie means that you need to spread your cheeks very wide, get a vice, get some hooks, grab each cheek, Pin it to one side of the room so you can get an extra stretch so your hole can be big enough to drop that big ass stick that you have up your ass so you can get some relief and stop saying takes like this.